It's a great pleasure to be here with you again uh, in the Quick Bite series. This is my third outing uh, with Zahn having me on. And uh, today I'm sponsored uh, by SS White, which is one of the manufacturers that I consult with extensively. Um, and it's been very interesting for me in the two years now that I have uh, consulted with SS White to introduce a company that is now 177 years old to the laboratory industry. Uh, because they have always been a dealer uh, represented company, they kind of get lost in the shuffle a little bit compared to some of the direct rotary companies that are out there. But uh, I can assure you when they reached out to me to help bring more exposure of their company and their outstanding products to the laboratory industry, I jumped at the chance. Uh, when I graduated from lab school in 1976, about a thousand years ago, I thought SS White was the only rotary company in dentistry. And at that time, I'm sure they were the prevalent one. Uh, but I can tell you that throughout my career, I've used their products extensively and everything that I will talk about today, I have personally tested in my own hands doing dentistry. And of course, I've found them to really consistently produce excellent results, great longevity and great value. Uh, project for me right now that's near and dear to my heart is the Foundation for Dental Laboratory Technology, and I have that at the uh, top of the screen just to remind me to talk for a moment about it. Uh, I was on the original board 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, for the Foundation uh, in helping to raise money in the manufacturing sector to provide educational content uh, to our industry. And of course, Zahn with their Zahn Academy does a fantastic job of supporting our education in dentistry as well. Uh, but the foundation is doing a fantastic job. I'm happy to say I'm the new fiscal officer starting next year. Um, and we do a lot. Uh, you, you can go to the foundation's website and you can see that there are many, many scholarships there for all types of things, including getting your CDT. Um, a, there's a scholarship there from the SPEAR from COIS, from all of the major educational centers in dentistry. They all have stepped up and provided uh, scholarship uh, support to attend their courses, which are among the very best in the world. So I'm very proud of what we're doing at the foundation. Uh, if you are a CDT, when you renew, there's a place on your renewal form to contribute money to the foundation, but you don't have to wait for that. You can always go to the foundation website. And even if it's just a few bucks, it all adds up very quickly because as we lose our academic institutions in this country uh, and our centers for really excellent learning opportunities over a couple of years, the foundation is stepping up in a big way to provide content that is provided by some of the top educators in the world. So I hope that you'll do your part to pitch in. And of course, as an NADL member, take advantage of, of using this to help train and develop talent on your team. Uh, Shameless plug for a podcast series, or as I understand it, a vodcast series, and I think I'm too old to even use that term, but uh, it's what my son-in-law, the graph artist, told me that uh, whenever you're doing video podcasts, they're vodcasts, and so now I'm hip and cool. Uh, but LabGab is a series that runs once a month. It's only about 20 to 22 minutes long, typically. Uh, my sense of this was that I wanted to hit it and get out and, and bring value. And you can see uh, the group on the left, beginning with Travis and ending with Jessica, who actually will be joining me today, this afternoon, to record her session. Uh, these are all the folks that have actively uh, already done lab gabs, and you can find these at YouTube. But the idea is to have these guests on and just allow them to talk about what they think is important to us in the industry. It's not an infomercial, although SS White is graciously supporting this. Uh, there's an introduction and a thank you to them. And after that, it's really about what these people have to share. On the right-hand side of the screen, some pretty well-known names there, I'm sure that many of you will recognize, are on deck. And uh, this is gonna run for the year and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I hope you'll go to YouTube and check these out because these are all tremendously influential people and great contributors to our industry. Thank you, SS White. So my philosophy as a dental technician from the very beginning of my education uh, in Durham and working for the uh, prosthodontic technician at UNC nights and weekends and working only with prosthodontists is that I was in an environment that was fostered with communication uh, and mutual respect. And I took that same 
philosophy as an inherent part of who I am and how I operate. And those of you out there that have ever worked with me on a team, you know that I believe in everybody being on the same page and everybody winning. Uh, it's not about deferring, I mean, excuse me, it's, it's not about intimidation or heavy handedness in any regard. I am a team builder and that's what I do now for my laboratory clients. But one of the first articles that I wrote in, in the laboratory industry many, many years ago for the journal in New York was the power of positive professional relations. And it was really about creating interdependence. And as hard as this is today, because we have a changing mindset of a lot of the dentists that are coming into dentistry being more entrepreneurial minded than service minded, it's still very important to seek out those doctors that have this mindset who will, will appreciate what we bring to the table. And the goals for you really are to learn as much as you can about clinical dentistry so you are at least on a pretty level playing field with them and can speak intelligently about what's being done in the operatory. Uh, over the years at Drake, I literally stalked people like Jerry Sheesh and Harold Hyman and Frank Spear, on and on and on, all the way down the line. And I now have 30 of the top clinicians in the world uh, that I consider to be friends and people that I can reach out to for questions and information. And so I built a very uh, strong cabinet, if you will, of recognizable references. So when I spoke to a doctor about preparations or bite registrations or any of those myriad of things that we deal with every day, I was able to refer them to a resource that was not me telling them how to do something, but me referring to the best of the business and the brightest to provide that information. And that was very well received. Uh, going through these two processes will really give you self-confidence, not arrogance, but self-confidence to pick up a phone and be comfortable talking to a dentist about clinical procedure and, of course, about your laboratory procedures. And it ends up building what is very powerful in business, and I believe it's having mutual respect. And finally, we have uh, there are three partners in every laboratory. There are the clinicians that you serve and patients. But there are also the manufacturers that you do business with and the dealers like Zon that do so much to support us. And as long as all three of those parties in that partnership win, there's no ending that partnership. That's when you stay together with people for years and years and years. And I know many of you have had that experience with your doctors. But what you really want to do is you want to create a scenario where they're comfortable asking questions and asking for your input so we get the right result the first time. And this is just a tremendous business philosophy, not just in the laboratory industry, but in any service business. I noticed early on uh, in working with SS White that they really do offer a total workflow solution for the processing of zirconia. And yes, it absolutely begins with the preparation because without an adequate preparation and, and a recording of that preparation, nothing we do on the bench does have any merit. And so that finishing up at the end with proper adjustments at delivery, SS White has solutions in every one of these spaces. And uh, of course, with the preparation and the chair side delivery instruments, uh, Henry Schein does a phenomenal job with these products and, uh, and really, really uh, SS White is extremely successful in the clinical space. And we're really looking to bring the laboratory side of the business up to the same level because everything that they offer, as we're gonna talk about uh, in this process, is the best quality that money can buy. So the most common laboratory challenge, and I should have just said challenge instead of challenges, number one, first and foremost, is preps. Uh, when I joined SS White's team as a consultant, they asked me to list the pain points for laboratories, to list five, and I said, okay, the first three are preps. That's lack of proper occlusal reduction on molars, proper, in, uh, excuse me, lack of adequate incisor cingulum reduction with a football-shaped diamond or a carbide to give us that lingual concavity in the maxillary anterior that we need for proper function and guidance. And finally, with zirconium oxide, uh, the misnomer has been out there almost from the beginning that zirconia is a gold crown substitute. And in some ways it is, as far as the way it wears, which is very even, and the fact that it can be made thinner than a PFM or an Emacs for that matter. But we must have chamfer margins because this material has to be milled at a minimum of six tenths of a millimeter through the mill to get it out without uh, chipping margins and then center it so that it doesn't fracture during centering. Doctors don't understand this. They, they're used to gold crowns. They think they can cut slice margins. We absolutely need chamfers 
to prevent us from having to thin margins on every crown that we make down to a knife edge because it can lead to potential clinical failures because we're doing that after it's been centered. It's important to understand that SS White uh, has resources, as you see with this prep guide for anteriors and posteriors. Dr. Robert Lowe and I did a uh, live remote hands-on course uh, actually for the Apex Lab Group uh, about six months ago where we recorded everything and then presented it live and sent deniforms to the offices with proper rotary devices and this technique sheet and had them literally follow Dr. Lowe's lead on the preparations for anterior and posterior teeth. And this goes back to what I was saying in my opening comments about let your laboratory, let you the technician be the resource for your clinical partners to help them improve their dentistry. And at the end of the day, they're more successful, you're more successful, and everybody can't wait to do it again. And again, I want to credit Dr. Lowe and SS White for supporting this course. And it is available uh, to do for your laboratory clients if you have interest. Just reach out to the folks at SS White and Dr. Lowe, and I would love to do the course for your group. So training, I think, is an extremely important thing that we need to talk about because we're getting ready to talk about designing crowns. Uh, in, in 3D space. And I use PTC Dental extensively during my time at Drake. Uh, the last 10 years that I was there, I was strictly responsible for education. That was after my middle 10 years of being general manager. And I found PTC's Verification 2000 system to be phenomenal. And what most people don't understand about this system is John Ness based the, the method of training off of the training he received in the Navy as a dental technician. And it is the most effective, quick, short path to good quality production and good production levels for developing technicians that I've ever seen. Uh, it really breaks things down to very nice detail. But when I'm hiring people off the street, which is largely what we did at Drake the last 10 years to develop them, this was my tool. But whenever I bring technicians in with the uh, potential to train them to design, they must have this course first, and it's actually available as an online course. But I also follow that course with the hands-on waxing of posterior crowns to give them a 3D tactile sense of what it is they're trying to create on a computer screen. And that makes all the difference in the world in their ability to really design crowns that take minimal adjustment after they come off the mill. And this is very inexpensive, and those of you that are individual technicians out there, you can do this at home. And it's a great tool for understanding posterior anatomy and occlusion. And there's a second course called Simplifying Anterior Anatomy, which really is one of the best basic anterior uh, morphology courses I've ever seen. In the space of CAD-CAM, uh, we have both ExoCAD and three-shape training from PTC Dental. Uh, and I do not have a financial relationship with this company. I just have so much confidence and faith in them because of the results we got in Charlotte. Uh, it was really quite remarkable, and many of the people that uh, are in that laboratory now are managers that came in off the street, and we trained them to a junior college level. So our zirconi offerings in the industry are really quite amazing now. We began with this super white chalky stuff that we could hide on second molars, uh, but we really struggled to get color and characterization. And as these materials have hybridized over the last seven or eight years, we now have materials that are still significantly stronger than lithium silicate or lithium desilicate, but are unbelievably aesthetic because of the transitional layering of the color and translucency, as well as the level of vitality that the materials you know, such as Zerlux Transitions offers us. And what I've noticed most remarkably about this is that people like uh, Pinka Sinair in Atlanta, who was David Garber's technician in Garber and Goldstein's office for many years, Pinkus Adair is one of the finest ceramists in the world. He no longer layers his full arch implant bridges. He, he mills them uh, from these types of materials and then characterizes with Mio characterization material uh, and gets stunning, stunning results. Uh, so the productivity goes way up, the labor goes way down, and the complexity of layering is pretty much going away. In the space of actually milling uh, your zirconia uh, in the green state, of course, uh, SS White has developed uh, about a year and a half ago now a series of diamond coated uh, carbides that are called Dura Dye. And Dura Dye is 
by far the best in the industry as far as my testing and comparison has uh, has proven. And I've also put these in the hands of 30 of the most significant laboratories in the country for testing, and they have found the same results. <clears throat> They're available for Roland, Veland, and Armand Gerbach, and uh, they cut very nicely, very smoothly, great margins. And as you can see on the right side of the screen below the image, uh, Brian Burkhart, who is the milling supervisor at Drake, was one of the earliest testers and found that these were fantastic, and we have found that consistently across the board. Uh, so we really expect this particular product for SS White to explode as more and more people become aware of it. And it's a great value as well, especially when you consider production and quality against cost. So we understand now very well that we need to do as much pre-centering contouring as possible of zirconia because this is still the green state and it really allows us to make adjustments on restorations in the green state and then center them. And if we do propagate, propagate any minor fractures from the rotary device, they're going to heal during centering. And the opposite is true once we're contouring after centering. And so this is really the safest way. And it also is soft at this stage. It's very easy to work with. I like showing this because technicians love this device because they can remove the sprue, uh, removal, remove the sprue evidence with the dark colored charcoal and then come right back with the same instrument without picking up and putting down something else and uh, polish it. Also in the bigger cases, especially your full art zirconia cases, uh, there are many fine technicians out there that are teaching Jack Morano being among them, I have so much respect for him, but they do a tremendous amount of their contouring and texturizing with uh, carbides um, and, and ultra fine diamonds, but especially good carbides. And the Great White Ultra product line from SS White has again been around for a long, long time and these things are phenomenal and they last forever. But any of these devices uh, that you would be interested in working with, you'll find in the SS White uh, Zon catalog. I mentioned uh, this because I think this is really gonna be one of the biggest changes that we're gonna see uh, in zirconia for the last six or seven years. When you take out consideration of translucency and vitality, is that now, I'm on Gerbach as well as a number of other manufacturers that I consult with that I have signed non-disclosure agreements on and cannot discuss by name are all working towards this process. And essentially what the science is, is you have a small muffle, a much smaller muffle compared to the muffles that we are able to uh, center multiple trays. This is three single units or three splinted units at a time. But imagine that day, and we all have them, where you're working on something that's got to go out that night and a crown gets broken or some chip margin chips or something happens. Now you can recapture that, mill it, and, and you know, in whatever your mill time is, depending on your, your drill sequence, uh, you know, 20, 25 minutes, and then go straight to the centering oven for 20 minutes and you're back in business. I also think with lean manufacturing, this is going to become more and more attractive because at Drake, when we first started printing, we used the uh, DP3000 from uh, 3D Systems, and that was the size of a giant mailbox, printing 125 patterns uh, per batch, and they were immaculately accurate. But we realized very quickly that we could not manage 125 of anything in a batch. And so when we started really taking lean manufacturing seriously and started batching, we replaced that as it wore out with smaller batch printers so that we could have redundancy and so that we could really continue to crank units in batches of 20 to 25 because that way we could get them to a team, they could address them. And by taking your batch size down, your uh, cycle is dramatically improved, it's increased, and quite honestly, the quality improves too because Anybody that's sitting there looking at three times the amount of work they can do in a day, uh, they feel rushed and they feel stressed. But this is going to lend itself to this, and I think we're going to see more and more of this type of oven with this centering ability in laboratories of all sizes. And obviously, we're going to see doctors take this on as well uh, because some of them want to do this in the office. But I don't think the uptake on that is going to be as great as what we've seen with uh, Serona and those types of chair-side processes. Uh, I think that uh, most doctors make more money <clears throat> preparing teeth and delivering restorations. Uh, so I don't think this is going to be that much of a threat to our zirconia segment as a laboratory. 
but I think it certainly can be a fantastic tool for getting smaller batches and moving things and especially dealing with uh, unforeseen emergencies. So the jazz lab polishers, as they were called initially, but I call them grinders, these are contouring stones, uh, coarse and medium uh, for lithium to silicate as well as zirconia. And again, I tested these against comparable product in the marketplace and I found them to perform extremely well. And the idea behind these types of stones is that they cut so smooth that literally when you come back to do your polishing, you are able to accomplish that very quickly. So just a couple of seconds of a quick video showing what I do. But I can tell you that when I mentioned this earlier about the designers really understanding anatomy and morphology, you should be able to in, in adjust contacts and approximate contacts and occlusal contacts and contour a crown ready for polishing in five to six minutes for a single unit. Uh, if it's more, the, the uh, designers are not producing a good product out of the mill. And I am very, very big on technicians feeling comfortable when they get something that's way over contoured or is not contoured even anywhere close, taking it back to the person that designed it and respectfully saying, tell me what you were seeing on the screen. And then when you show them the actual case and you talk about what, how it ended up versus what they thought it would be, there's a very rapid adjustment and improvement in the designer's abilities to give you what you need because we really don't want to be doing massive contouring with these because of propagation of fracture. But these stones grind very smooth. And all I'm really doing here is going in and refining and flattening just a bit the primary planes that exist on all cusps in the posterior. For each cusp, there are two primary planes on the buccal or the lingual, and there are two primary planes on the occlusal surface that make up an actual cusp. And this is another part of the PTC training that really helps technicians understand the basic block morphology of teeth and then very quickly refine them to the proper aesthetics. I follow that with a uh, tapered point, and this is just a habit of mine. I've always liked working with tapered diamonds for ceramics and with zirconia with tapered stones because I like the long surface area of the side of that taper barrel that uh, really allows me to come in and blend everything after I've contoured and thin margins as needed. And again, just running over, it just takes a couple of minutes just to blend and smooth. And then we follow that with polishing. And these, of course, are the polishers from SS White for zirconia and lithium, lithium to silicate, as well as ceramics, ceramo metal. Uh, and this type of product has been in the marketplace for quite some time now, but these perform extremely well and really uh, last. They last a long time. And going through with this, depending on how much contouring I had to do with that stone, a lot of times I don't even start with the coarse wheel. I'll go straight to the medium wheel because if it's minimum, there's no re need for the coarse. And that step can actually be minimized. But I'm just going to go over and I'm going to completely polish very quickly in three steps. All the areas that I adjusted in contour, you'll notice I'm not as concerned about polishing the entire surface as I am the areas where I adjust because what comes off the mill and out of the centering oven typically is, is pretty darn good if you're using good rotary devices in your mill. And this is, of course, the medium wheel. And the same thing with the fine wheel. And then when I'm dealing with molars in particular, I always like to work with uh, this jazz fine point to go in and polish my uh, dissectional grooves on the buccal and lingual surfaces as well as in the occlusal table. So one of the first issues that we had uh, in the beginning working with zirconium oxide was there was a significant amount of concern in the prosthodontic community about zirconia wearing opposing enamel uh, because the hardness was what everybody was touting. You could drive the crown into a pine board with a hammer and not break it. Uh, it they were concerned that that was going to translate into excessive wear of natural dentition. So Dr. Burgess and his team at the University of Alabama at Birmingham did this test in uh, 2013 and uh, 2012 and then published it in 2013 in JPD. And their conclusion uh, essentially was that properly adjusted and polished zirconia wears better than any other ceramic material we've had against enamel. And it wears more evenly than type four gold, especially type three gold on molars. 
uh, because it those goals will wear. This material wears very evenly, but it is critical that the doctor understands that they can adjust these things with gross reduction diamonds because what they're really doing is taking uh, what I would call a baseball bat with boulders glued to it and spinning it at you know 45, 50,000 RPMs and just cutting gouges into this material that then are impossible to polish out. And so we, what we want is we want them adjusting with smooth devices, just like the, the jazz grinders that I showed you earlier, except mounted for chair side use. Uh, so that when they're doing their adjustments, they're getting that same very smooth adjustment and then polishing it with the polishing system uh, also indicated for clinical use. And this absolutely makes all the difference in the world as far as longevity uh, intraorally. So in reaching the end of our discussion, uh, Zirconia Workflow Total Solutions have been illustrated here. Uh, it's nice to have everything under one roof. Uh, I can tell you that in, whether it was producing uh, gas removable partial dentures or whatever it was that I was doing in Drake as manager, uh, I wanted to make sure as much as possible that I was using components and materials from one company for a complete system. Because that way, if I had issues with my process, I didn't have one company saying, well, it's not us, it must be them. And not that companies would ever do that. But the fact of the matter is, if it's all a closed system, it is one source. And they're all designed to work together very, very well uh, because they have the same objective, same engineers, uh, and everybody involved. So in closing, I want to once again uh, remind you to contribute and take advantage of the materials that the Foundation for Dental Technology has put out there for our industry. Uh, I want to again mention the fact that SS White has been around for a long time and they are the oldest remaining dental company in America, uh, now 177 years, which is truly remarkable. I thank you so much for your attention and uh, if we have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Yes, David, thank you so much. And at this time, I'd like to open up for some questions. Um, David, I do have one right now. And this attendee would like to know if rapid sintering zirconia technology is available today. Uh, it is. It is just becoming available. And one, the only one that I can speak to is, is Armand Gerbach with their uh, DRS system. Uh, but they are, it, it, they're starting to trickle into North America now. They're not available in mass. But I would say that by the time we get to Chicago next year uh, in February, that them as well as several other manufacturers will have product in that space. And I think that's going to be the big buzz uh, at Lab Day in Chicago is, is really taking a serious look at these, not just to deal with your emergencies, but also to give you the ability to run small batches of restorations. Uh, this is all about turnaround time, right? Everybody's trying to do five days zirconia crowns. And along that same line, if we do modelless crowns for our doctors, once we convince them they don't need the model by having them do a few cases with a small printed resin model, uh, it really becomes a very quick process for us because we're not generating models. Uh, and in this case, we're not centering overnight. We're centering and continuing to run. And of course, these devices are gonna be less expensive than the big massive um, centric ovens. And so it is possible to have redundancy and uh, and really, push the work. I mean, doctors want it in, you know, they want us to turn it in five days. Uh, we are very quickly going to see laboratories go into three days routinely for zirconia crowds. Mm -hmm.